Hey, Warren Eckstein here. I want to expand a little bit on some of the topics we talked about on the Pet Show today. I never have enough time because your questions and your comments always are my priority. But I wanted to talk about this. So I may mention it on the show, or I may have mentioned it on the show. However, that being said, I want you to understand that lots of times I want to expand more on a specific subject. So that's why I have now the after show subjects at my YouTube channel, because it gives me the opportunity to go into a lot more depth. For example, on today's show, a lot of people call me up about separation anxiety. And we've talked about separation anxiety over and over again, and we'll continue talking about it. But is that always what freaks your dog out when he's left home alone? Is that what makes him crazy? You know, so many people have video cameras, and they can watch their dog, and all of a sudden, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the dog's been great all day, but all of a sudden, he goes a little crazy and starts running around the house and jumping and chewing on things. So what causes that? I want to share this with you, something I wrote and put together for you. Common household noises may be stressing your dog as well as your cat out. And this is according to researchers at the University of California at Davis. They found that people may not actually recognize that the dog is stressed when exposed to common household noises. While it's well established that sudden loud noises such as fireworks, thunderstorms can trigger anxiety in a dog. A new study finds common noises such as vacuum cleaner, microwave can trigger a response. This according to Frontiers in Veterinary Science. The research found that high frequency intermittent noises such as battery warning of a smoke detector or carbon dioxide detector can cause anxiety rather than low frequency continuous noises. So leaving a TV on is fine, leaving a radio on is fine, the dog will adapt to that noises, but it's those, those high frequency noises that can really make a difference. And I want you to know why. We know that there are a lot of dogs that have noise sensitivities, but we underestimate their fearfulness to noise we consider normal because the dog guardians can't read the body language. So once again, as any good therapist is going to blame you guys. If you know what your dog's normal or your cat's normal body language looks like, and all of a sudden you're home with them and a smoke alarm goes off or the microwave goes off or whatever goes off in the house and your animal's reacting, that's a, a response to a trigger. And it's important for you to desensitize and get your dog adjusted to it. And not only that, and this is something a lot of people don't take into consideration. You know, when I was younger, I lived on Long Island, as you know, never by my accent. Um, I belong to the volunteer fire department. And a lot of people in the volunteer fire department, we have our firehouses pretty much in residential areas. We were getting a lot of complaints from people saying when the sirens go off, the dogs go absolutely insane. But it's not just a matter of the sound being different. That high, high intensity can actually potentially be painful to your dogs as well. So here's what I recommend. First of all, it's so important to socialize. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. It's so important to socialize a dog coming into the home with noises. It's a lot easier if we're doing it with a puppy or a kitten. But sometimes, and thank God for you guys who go out and you adopt shelter dogs and rescue dogs, maybe they were never exposed to any of the household noises that they're going to hear once they come into your home. Now, I'll give you an example. When I first got my new Harley Davidson, which by the way, I don't have anymore. I'm not allowed to ride anymore. When I first got my Harley Davidson, Molly, uh, not Molly, uh, Cisco and Skyler were living with me. Now, uh, Skyler was a street dog and Cisco was out of a hoarding situation. And neither one had a lot of exposure to the sounds of a motorcycle. It's loud. People freak out when they hear a Harley and so do animals. So I made a recording and I played it very gradually for, for uh, Cisco and, and Skyler to hear. And eventually, whenever they heard it, something positive happened. So I counter conditioned them and they actually enjoyed the sound. So if you have an older dog, take into consideration things that may scare them, the vacuum cleaner, the microwave. You can make a recording of those or, or give the dog a lot of attention when they first hear it in a positive, positive way. I want you to understand that very often when your dog is misbehaving, they're anxious when you're not home, they're chewing, they're doing all kinds of destructive things. It's not always separation anxiety. Many, many times it's just noises they hear, truck backfiring, down the block, noises they hear they're not familiar with. I want you to take that into consideration. And if you're adopting a new dog or if you have a dog at the home, socialize them to noises. For example, I did a whole segment on how to desensitize a young family, their dog, to a baby crying. I recorded a baby crying, played it at a low volume, increased it gradually, made the dog feel great every time he heard it, and the dog and the baby grew up to be best friends. There's always a resolution, only sometimes, sometimes we've got to remove the, the human head and look at life from the dog's point of view. We'll see you on the pet show.